My name is Quagersall. Welcome to Deep Dives. In this series of videos, we've been going over interesting starts in EU4 1.30 and the Emperor DLC. First couple videos, we did France and the Low Countries, Northern Germany and Southern Germany, and today we're going to be focusing on Italy. So if you're watching this the day that it comes out, I'm actually going to be live on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Quagersall playing uh, Savoy and trying to form Italy with a couple buddies of mine, Lusitanian and Hogaten. Who are also Twitch streamers. So check that out if you're interested. Uh, we're going to be looking at three or four particularly interesting starts because of map and mission changes in this patch. Uh, but you should know that Italy has quite a number of different ways of play. I think it's a great start for relatively inexperienced players to learn how to handle uh, aggressive expansion, especially in this area, to learn new mechanics like playing a uh, a republic and trying to be rich with Venice or Genoa, uh, playing the Papal States, uh, trying to break out from under a union. There's a lot of interesting things that you can do in this area. We're going to be focusing on Savoy, Naples, the Papal State, Milan to an extent, because I do need to mention that they are super powerful if you build them correctly, and then Bologna for the uh, start that you can play if you think you're just too good. So if you like the video and subscribe and comment down below with additional things that you'd like to see in videos like this, I've been getting a lot of comments from you guys with uh, suggestions on like achievement runs that I should put a video out about or uh, other things that you'd like to see explained a little more deeply like strategies and starts and that kind of thing. And I'm going to be making a list and putting it on my Discord for people to comment and... Uh, basically vote with reactions to the ones that they'd like to see the most and the ones that get the most reactions that'll form the priority list of which videos that I make so head on over to the discord if you want to uh, be a part of that and influence which videos come up on the channel but for now let's jump in and start talking about these tags now in previous videos I've talked about tags kind of in ascending order of difficulty with the easiest one moving up to the hardest really hard one but in Italy, a lot of the diplomatic situations make a lot of these starts about the same. I will start with the Papal State because I think they have the most consistently, I wouldn't say easy game, but consistently a game where you're not going to die immediately. Um, and in Italy, that really depends on if Castile, France, and Austria are rivaled correctly. Otherwise, you can have trouble moving down into this area or not getting excommunicated if you're not the Pope, or not having the Austrians come down on you hard, or the French come down on you hard. The Papal State has the ability to usually, and in this case as well, um, be able to ally their pick of the three major powers that surround you, and any other little guys that they want. Uh, so that makes it a little bit easier. Plus, you're going to be in charge of the papacy at the beginning and have influence on it even if you're not the papal controller which can be really good you're going to be able to appoint cardinals either in your lands or in other people's lands as they come up and you also have this new mission tree for forming the kingdom of god technically the kingdom of god is just a decision here you just need to own the highlighted provinces and bam Country name changes the kingdom of God, and you get permanent claims on everything in Italy. Um, but if you aren't able to come way up here to Friuli or, or Trent or over here in Savoy and that kind of thing, you'll get um, missions that encourage you to go north a bit, and then into Genoa in this area, and then across Milan and Venice. And at that point, you probably will be able to form the kingdom of God. But if you can't, you get these... Uh, claims on the islands and then you can have this to get a modifier for basically being Italy at that point you definitely have to be the king of God although Trent is not included in Italy so technically if uh, he doesn't leave the empire and everybody else does there might be a situation where you're able to form Italy basically because you can't form Italy as the Pope um, you would have everything you need for Italy but not have Trent so you can't do the kingdom of God so it's a little interesting a uh, little tid... I'm not entirely certain why they do that, but it is what it is. 
there's a lot of other interesting things with this mission tree uh like things like in helping lithuania or um helping everybody who's in the the catholic league in the in the league war or uh helping anybody <laughs> helping here it is everybody get no that's the one where you get a mission tree but there's a there's several of these where like all participants count they they buff other people in some places which i find very interesting and then there's a few where you go out to ethiopia you go to the levant get uh claim you don't get claims over there you're just supposed to go find those yourself i suppose and then you even if you have catholics in china or japan you can have fun things go on with with the pope so that's really cool um you might try to use their initial two starting vassals to help you get a little bit of an edge at the beginning and of course you still have this over here that you can release as another vassal if you wanted to do a little bit of a vassal swarm so yeah kingdom of god papal state into the kingdom of god is a really fun campaign and it's and if you are able to unite everything that the papal state should you get 10 prestige wow oh no you want the government reform definitely but you don't have to take it that's good it's good they don't force it on you there is a new tier 3 government reform that apparently skips you directly there so you get to take a tier 2 if you want uh, but you you will not get this before tier 3 um, that gives manpower and prestige and devotion and stuff. It's pretty good, especially with the appoint cardinals cost. Uh, so you'll still be able to appoint cardinals. Um, it, it halves it. So it would have been almost 100 ducats for us to appoint ourselves a cardinal. But now we can appoint one for half that cost, which is really cool. And you can now see them on the map, which is a feature that I really love in this update. So try out a kingdom of God, i.e. papal states campaign now and you don't have to get rid of the pope which is super cool now moving up to the north sandwiched between the french and the empire is savoy so savoy is one of my favorite starts in italy uh, their new mission tree gives them a lot of power and the fact that they have now have two more vassals they have always started with Montferrat, uh, but now they have saluzzo and geneva and which is going to give them quite a bit more power. Now, there are some interesting missions and events that start to encourage Geneva to go over to the Swiss and into the Empire. Um, but you can get them back. If you're able to get them back or keep them from leaving, you can push in and even get claims on Burgundy. And if you can kill Burgundy, you can become... The Duke of Burgundy you actually get like a Duke of Burgundy modifier which is kind of interesting and if you then try to start role-playing as the Burgundians and either claim the French throne or take Paris and, and you're not part of the HRE you can uh, get a union over France I'm not entirely sure why you would need a union over the French if you already hold Paris but it's there uh, which is kind of interesting you might be able to get the rest of him uh, but the main part of the mission tree has you conquering down into Genoa and down into Sardinia and Sicily and then getting a union over Naples, which starts its permanent claims. But if he goes independent, you get a union, which is pretty cool. After that, you have the unity of Italy, which is a diplo annexation cost for the rest of the game. So that's really cool. So, yeah, this uh, taking Provence and stuff is going to be needed to get into France as well, which will eventually push you all the way out into here. Again, I'm not certain why you would need a union over the French if you already have Paris and all of this, but hey, um, just the rest of him, I suppose. There doesn't seem to be any sort of equivalent to the Austrian union over Poland, where they, they have the Austrians conquer all of this land, but then once you get the union over Poland, he, he loses all of his cores in this area. So that he, you know, won't hate you for the, till the end of time for having half of his cores. There doesn't seem to be that with the French. So they're probably going to hate you if you do force the union over them. But still, it's a France union. And anytime you have that, it's pretty strong. Another thing that I really like to see here is this strength in numbers, which gives you relations and reputation. And if you keep going down this, where you get good allies and you have big rivals and stuff like that, uh, you can get Diplo Monarch skill 
<laughs> like a lot of it. One on, on your guy and your heir now, and two in the future. So that's a lot. So and it's pretty cool. And they'll upgrade some forts for you. I like this mission tree right here. You have some of the Alpine forts. Uh, they just get upgraded to the newest fort level. So I would pop this right after either level four or level six forts have been uh, researched. Get some free upgrades. That's pretty cool. Now, while just about every tag in Italy can form Italy itself, I wanted to point out Milan as a special case because with the changes in 1.30, Milan can get super buffed. So they have a thing that can happen if your leader dies really early in the game where you can form an Ambrosian Republic, it's called. Then this allows you to have tax, morale of armies, and all it does is take absolutism from you, which is very not useful at the beginning of the game. So this is one of the best tier one uh, reforms you can have in this game. And then later, if you keep this for a long time, you're going to get morale of armies plus 10 more. Um, you combine that with a good idea build, especially plutocratic, which has a lot of good stuff in it and will get you rich and powerful. A decent idea set, which is similar to Savoy's, but I would say a little buffed, especially with the infantry combat ability and manpower there. And a mission tree that is very similar, which uh, gets you into Genoa and then down into Ferrara and Tuscany. Union with Naples happens only if you are a duchy and so are they. They're independent, but without it, you just get uh, permanent claims. You even get to go out against Austria and, and things like that. It's a, it's a decent mission tree, and it pivots into the main Italian one. So I wanted to mention that because I know some people are excited about playing as Milan and getting them super strong. And an Italy that comes from Milan can actually be stronger, even though it's a little bit more difficult to start. And you don't get an intermediate tag like Savoy, Sardinia, Piedmont uh, that Savoy has. Now, another interesting start to the formation of Italy is Naples. So early in the game, Naples is a, in a union under Aragon. But if you're lucky enough for the king of Aragon to die... He sometimes, and quite frequently in this patch, will allow you to go independent. And you'll be ru ruled by Afonso de Trastamara once you do this mission, once you do this event here. You have a choice whether you're going to refuse to pay dues to the Pope or pay dues to the Pope. Now, if the Pope is strong and you think he might attack you, it might be a good idea to pay dues to him. Otherwise, you can just tell him to F off. Now you're independent. Once you go independent and you come up to strength, you're going to be able to get permanent claims in Tuscany, which is going to bring you down into things like uniting the two Sicilies and claims into the rest of Italy, like there. Even claims over into Greece, down into the Holy Land, over into Aragon, there's a lot going on here. And if you're lucky enough to take this area, you get to become two Sicilies. Now, the, the ideas for Neapolitan ideas are okay. There's morale of armies. There's dev and tech costs. You're going you're gonna to save a lot of points. You're going to make a good amount of money. They're not super good as far as military. I mean, morale and manpower are okay. But they're not, they're not lighting anything on fire. But if, once you switch over to, to Sicilies, they do change. If you're able to unite Sicily with Naples and reach Admin Tech 10, you will be able to form Sicily. And your nice purple color will switch to an odd shade of gray that reminds me of Prussia. Which is interesting. You get conquests. On a good number of people because of the missions that you're going to finish to get to that point and your ideas change a little bit it's really more of a shuffle but there's some nice ones added like core creation the navy stuff might be useful for getting down here and doing some of these mission trees um the tech costs are always nice and that sort of thing the mission tree itself doesn't change uh, you only get a change when you move up into italy 
This seems to be true with uh, Sartoon Piedmont, uh, Two Sicilies, and every other little formable tag like uh, Tuscany and that kind of thing. It's the same mission tree until you move up into Italy. But it is kind of now, whatever way you decide to form Italy, you will get access to new ideas and mission tree. The ideas are pretty decent. Um, infantry combat ability, manpower, galley combat ability, which will be useful in the Mediterranean, um, money, core creation costs, quite good, improved relations, global trade. There's a couple stinkers like fort defense and stab costs, but it's pretty good. What's really amazing though is this mission tree. You're going to get things like permanent claims on all of France. Permanent claims on all of Iberia. Um, the ability to even attack all the way up here to Paderborn uh, for a recreation of the battle in which the Germans beat Julius Caesar, which is interesting. So, pretty cool. Pivots you into going into Greece, even into the Holy Land, Egypt, Anatolia, all kinds of stuff there. It's pretty cool. Um, one note, if you do form Italy as Milan or another republic like Florence, you will be a republic. But if you form them as one of the duchies like Naples or Savoy, you will be a kingdom. Obviously, you can switch back and forth between the two in the normal ways, between government reforms and despotisms and things like that. But yeah, Italy is a very strong play, and you can set yourself up to be super dense and take on like a late game Ottomans with half his dev and still beat him with just much better troops. I had trouble deciding which tag to highlight as the really difficult start in Italy, because there's several. Any of the subjects of Savoy, uh, the Papal States, even uh, Venice, if you count those, although they're not really Italian. Uh, Luca or Siena or Mantua are also all pretty difficult. But uh, I decided to go with Bologna or baloney as they call it where I come from I do not know where the G went one of the main reasons is the new achievement starting as Bologna become Mexico or Texas this means that you've got to go colonial you don't even have a coast you're way over here in Italy the Iberians especially Castile and Spain it's gonna to get to Mexico before you can you're gonna to have to fight your way out of here as a republic with very little prospects for getting to the coast and getting big and you're not going to be able to take military ideas unless you want to delay colonization until way late. One possible way to do that would be to ally France and late game go in against the Spaniards as a basically Italy kind of tag. Although you don't really want to change because you do have to... No, you can. You can form Italy. You just have to eventually be Mexico or Texas. So... You have to start as Bologna and become Mexico or Texas. So Italy run is fine. Uh, Italy allied to France killing the Spaniards might be your best bet. They also have the kind of hard eye. Uh, you don't get your own mission tree. Your ideas are kind of crap. There's a few decent ones like the morale of armies. Um, and I suppose core creation costs definitely. Um, but you have some weird ones like... Uh, this guy right here, you don't get anything here unless you switch your religion. So I would suggest doing so because you're going to need every little buff you can to break out here. But if somebody could, you'd get to see like an orange uh, Mexico or Texas, which could be pretty cool. So those are the interesting starts in Italy. There are a couple more that I didn't mention. I thought I might touch on Florence, even though they have not received much of a change in this patch they are pretty cool they do have a mission tree that is new um, it's not too extensive very similar to maybe Milan or Naples to eventually form uh, Italy uh, but they have some interesting things like you needing uh, 12 monarch points a month to be able to start them off and that kind of thing that's just because they're a republic and you're gonna have 666s a lot of times and be able to because of advisor cost reductions run a level three guy and that's going to be 12 points right there so it's not as hard as it sounds they also get to form tuscany uh, they're a great one to do the prince of egypt achievement with and then come back and form italy as well uh, they can be very fun i played them a long time ago but it was 
way back in like 1.26 or something like that. Um, but I would suggest if anybody's interested here, there's some, a really cool event chain with the Medicis and Sarah Novola, or have you say its name, where they're burning bonfires and things like that. And early Protestantism stuff way long before, kind of similar to how the Hussites were not liking the way things were going at the time. But Italy is a really fun place to, to start the game, and I, I would say that the area is more for intermediate to advanced players, just because of how difficult it can get as you try, start to try to expand, and the aggressive expansion kind of stacks up on you. But if you're willing to take the chance and you're willing to grow, it can be really fun to play in. Let me know what starts you guys are going to do in Italy. If there's any particularly interesting tags that I missed uh, or mission trees that uh, need to be highlighted a little more, I would love to know. And I'd love to know about your starts in the area. And um, leave a like and subscribe if you want to help out the video and the channel. Come over to the Discord if you want to talk about other videos you like to see or other starts that you uh, did and want to show off. I'm always uh, interested in, you know, going back and forth about cool runs that people are doing. I will see you in the next episode, which is going to be on the Balkans and Hungary. We'll highlight Byzantium and all the other changes that are in the area. I will see you there. Bye-bye.